Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another Hortitech tutorial. In this video, we are going to show you guys how we put together our truss reinforcement kits. Now, the truss reinforcement kits are an add-on webbing that goes additional with our truss, our bows, that come standard with our greenhouses. So, this video is designed to show you how I put together my jig on site when I'm getting ready to build these structures. I'm going to show you where I put them, how I make sure every single truss reinforcement kit that I build, all my webbings and all of my bracing all ends up in the same spot every time. It's a quick, efficient way to get everything done and get them all prepped before you go ahead and you set them into your footings. Stay tuned. All right, so before we hop right into this, I'm just gonna show you a brief overview of what a completed truss looks like just so we can get some, uh, some terms out of the way. So with this truss member that's completed, the bottom section right here is referred to the bottom cord. These two webs here are just referred to webbing and the outside bow is considered the top cord. These connections that connect all these webbings together are considered brace bands. And this is the carriage bolt, which is a hardware that connects them, 5 16 carriage bolt. And 3 8 self-tapping screws to secure the bow together. So generally, as far as tools are concerned, what I like to have on site is two impact drivers ready to go. I like to keep one outfitted with a 3 8 adapter with a half inch socket ready to go. This makes securing the carriage bolts way faster. And I like to have another one already equipped with a 3 8 hex drive. It's got a magnetic head and this is for securing the 3 8 self-drilling screws. Use a sledgehammer for the grade stakes that are in there. Tape measure, Sharpie. And obviously eye protection and ear protection is recommended. All right guys, so our first step is to get all of our materials over to our jig. So I'm gonna grab two of our, our top cord pieces, get them dragged over here. And I'm just gonna lay them right in front of my grade stakes. Get them somewhat lined up. Now I'm just setting them in front of my grade stakes now because I don't actually want them in the jig while I'm installing them. And then I gotta grab the peak piece to the top cord and I've got these truss splices here. So I'm gonna get these all thrown down and just roughly lay it out. There we go, boom. There it is. All right, now I'm gonna mark everything out for my self-tapping screws. This isn't required, but it keeps all of your, your screws in the same spot, which makes it look nice when you install since all your screws are exposed. So I mark this guy 12 inches because it's two foot long on the center. And then I mark at three inches and six inches on each side of what I'm doing. Three inches, six inches. I repeat on the other side. 12 inches, mark center. Three inches, six inches. Repeat. Three inches, six inches. All right. We can retire the tape measure. Now, 3H driver. 3 8 self-tapping screws. They're included with your kit. I just always put them in my little bins because I don't like digging through a bag. So first step, I put everything together on the top cord first. So I'll make sure that I'm lined up here with my line. I'll grab two of my self-tapping screws. I like to make sure my drill's on a setting two just so it doesn't overpower because if you have it on a three, you'll burn the screw out if it's spinning too fast. And then all I do is line up here 
and then just go ahead and screw right in. I keep my foot on here to stop the vibration. One. Two. Then I'm gonna move over, I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side. Two screws. Flip it in. Halfway in, beauty. All right. Screw. There you have it, peak screwed together. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna insert it into each side at a time, line it up so I get lined up. If it doesn't go in easy, you're not lined up. It should be, it should slide pretty easy. So I usually just give it a little jiggle and make sure that side's good. And then I come along to the other side and make sure I'm kind of compressing as I move it. I get my pieces lined up, get them started. And then just jiggle it all together till it's in. All right, so now, sorry, got a little aggressive there when the jiggling. So now you see it's all put together, but my feet are not level because of where I moved on the ground here. So. I want to make sure that my feet are relatively level with each other. That one I can see is pointed up a hair, so I'm just going to throw that 2x4 underneath there, clean it up. My grade right now is level, but as you move these, these pieces around, it'll dig in a little bit. And you want to just make sure you, you have everything all dialed in. So I got this together, make sure my seams are touching. I got my marks, grab my other two screws. And then finish it off. Okay, one Same thing. Repeat on the other side. Put my screws back. up oh that is not the right screw slipped in there <laughs> culprit get rid of that let's get a freshie in here all right okay great all right so now we're Whole entire bow assembly is secure and we are going to move on to our brace band so your kit's going to come with a bunch of hardware and inside the hardware is going to be at least for this kit we got one and seven eighths brace bands we're going to need four for this model and one three eighths space brand so a little trick i like to do before i slide them on is i take all the one and seven eighths and I, uh, I just give them a little little pull. It just helps sliding them over the bow before I start so you're not fighting it. Okay. Handled. Now I'll take two of them. I always slide them on before I start. Otherwise, you're going to have to spread them over the bow before you start. So I'll slide them onto the bow. First one goes all the way to the top. Swing it up. Second one right there. Lay it down. And I'm going to repeat the process out on the other side here. So grab this guy, throw it on all the way to the top, and this guy just lightly. Okay. Now we're going to get it in our jig. So first thing I usually do is get it, get one side in because it makes it a whole lot easier. So 
I'll get this all prepared. Get that there. I know where everything's already supposed to be. So I'll lift this, make sure I'm over my footing. Make sure that I'm, I'm started right here in between these two. That way I know where I'm going. I'm inside my three lines. So I know I'm in the right spot here. I'll take my other guy over here. I'll put it in here. I know I'm against the wood on both sides now, or at least on this side. I go back, just double check that we're good. I'm out, so pull that in. I'm making contact. And now you can see here, I've got one grade stake keeping my peak where I need to be. I've got two grade stakes sandwiching my bow on each side. Now, when I did my initial layout, I pulled tape measure from the inside of that grade stake to the inside of the opposing grade stake down the line here on each side of the bow. So I measure 20 feet from the inside of this grade stake, grade stake to the inside of this grade stake to make sure that my bow always lands 20 foot outside to outside because that's the distance between my footings here outside to outside is 20 foot. So my grade stakes are in so that way all my webbings are always gonna land at the same spot. So those are both in, they're all hammered in, they're tight. I'm gonna come back yonder here and grab the rest of my materials. So I got my, my bottom cord, this guy right here. You'll know it's the bottom cord because it's got a flattened end on both ends. Grab that. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my webbings right here. All right, for the fun part, lay the webbings out in the center here, put this guy down. Okay, so that's the point of the jig here. So the jig keeps everything where it's supposed to be. So you can see on my bottom cord here how my bottom cord edge is lined up with the bow and it's fairly close. And then you can see I've got, well, actually it might be in the light, so I'll try to step out of light for you. I've got two grade stakes here, one dead center, and that will make sense in a minute. That's my brace band placement. And I've got two more grade stakes on this side, keeping it exactly straight where it needs to be every time. And then I've got my other end over here that's gonna get connected. So now I move all my brace bands to their desired locations, which, I have these grade stakes all as indicators so I don't need to measure anymore. Obviously I measured on my first one, which you can refer to your layout to get the measurements. So I'll move them all in front of each of the grade stakes that I have in place just so I have that reference. Everything's good, groovy, boom, everything's in place. Now I gotta get the brace band installed here, this little guy, onto this bottom cord. Now. These are a little tight, so what I like to do is either have a hammer on hand or something, and I just give them a little tap because they got to be encouraged to go home. That goes back where it needs to be. Make sure we're lined up relatively good. Flip this brace band over. Make sure that's hunky dory. That's up, that's up, that's up. We're centered up. Now, I usually use a pair of dikes. You don't have to do this, but I like my fingers, so I like to take them. You can use vice grips, anything you got, and just give these bands a little, a little pinch before you start. It'll make getting the carriage bolt in a heck of a lot easier. So I'll go down the line. Oh, yeah. There we are. And give everything a little bit of encouragement here. Squeeze, handled. All right, now we can bolt. So, our decks go away now. We got our carriage bolts, we got our nuts. I always like to start with my bottom cord because this is the only one that has the ability to shift a little bit. So, we go ahead. I always start on the bottom, feed it through. That way my nuts facing me, I just, get a couple threads on it, not even finger tight, just, just start it. That way, 
you don't strip them when you when you run your impact to tighten them so i'll come back through on this side same deal boom make sure it fits get it in there handled okay a little pinch now you see why the the uh, trick with the dike's nice because it already is a little bit compressed for you so that's all good we're good we take a look down the line here make sure that we're straight make sure nothing's pushing around we know that we're we're hunky dory all right now we got this guy here in the center so i got my grade stake here because these webs actually meet right in the middle of this greenhouse so the grade stakes here just to line my brace band up i know i'm centered Already pre-measured pre that on the first one. Built my layout. Get my brace band going here. I always start these a little high. Get it, get it just, just barely started. Put the second guy. They actually, they actually share this brace band together. So there's enough room in there. You get them both inside. Nice and cozy. There we go. Brace band started. Same thing. Follow it up north. And we get our, our webbings attached here. So last step. That's why it's nice to keep everything loose. So you got a little bit of play while you do this. If you screw them down as you go, it really just sucks. You don't just don't do it. It just sucks. All right. So we'll move our way over here. And then let's see. Get our last guy. Our last guy in here. Let's go. Come on. Come on, baby. Do come here. Okay, there she goes. All right, so everything's all tightened down. All my brace bands are at my marks. Everything's good. I'll go back over here. Put my tools back. This is where this guy comes into play with the socket adapter. Start over here. Make sure my, my bottom cord's as centered on the bow as I can come through suck it down come through over here lift them up a hair suck them down I'm already centered over here so that looks good suck it down move it along there she goes sweet all right well, there you have it well there you have it guys that's how i put together my truss reinforcement packages i hope this was helpful and again that was for a uh, 20 foot semi gable model if uh if you guys are interested in getting a greenhouse or are checking out any more of our videos you can check them out on our uh, on our web page there we got a bunch of other tutorials to help you guys you know get through the build process get everything done but um thanks for checking it out hopefully it was helpful then again if you need anything check us out on hordatechdirect.com thanks